Welcome again to College Algebra. Today, we're looking at functions, their graphs, and their properties. A graph, in particular any two-dimensional graph, consists of plotted coordinate pairs. Since any collection of coordinate pairs is a relation, all graphs are graphs of relations. Relations that never map one to many are called functions. When mapping numbers to numbers, we're going to be especially interested in functions we can describe using equations. Let's begin by looking at the most general case, graphs of relations. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. We can graph any relation by constructing coordinate axes, placing elements from the first coordinate on one axis, elements from the second coordinate on another axis, and plotting the pairs that make up the relation. Notice how if the relation includes a map from one to many, and thus is not a function, a vertical line will intercept two points on the graph. In this case, the vertical line gives us a graphical test for functions. Anytime we're given a graph, we can use this vertical line test. Let's say we're given a graph to examine. In this case, I'm using the graph of the equation for the unit circle. Because I can find a vertical line that intersects the graph in more than one point, the vertical line test tells us this is not the graph of a function. Most of the function graphs we're going to look at are also graphs of equations. Let's graph the function given by the equation y equals x squared minus 2. We're going to do this by plugging in values for x and using them to evaluate the y values, creating solution pairs, values for x and y that satisfy the equation, and then plot them as points on the Cartesian plane. Plug in more values for x to get more points. The more points you plot, the better you'll be able to visualize the complete graph. Once you have a sense of what it looks like, you can sketch it in. With practice and experience, a glance at the equation is enough to know the general shape of many functions. With a little practice, you can read the graph of a function. When first presented with a graph, notice how it covers a region of the plane. The set of x values in this region is called the domain. The set of y values in this region is called the range. Continuous functions, like this one, will have a continuous domain and range. Occasionally, we'll also be interested in functions that have breaks in their x values. In either case, we can represent the domain and range with interval notation and read these intervals, at least approximately, by looking closely at the graph. Looking at x values, this graph appears to run between negative 4 and 6. The y values require some interpretation. I see five tick marks between 0 and 50, so each tick mark must be 10 units. We look left and right for the domain, and we look up and down for the range. The lowest part of this graph is about three tick marks below negative 100. Call it negative 130. The highest point is about four tick marks above 50. Call it 90. You'll notice I've written the domain and range as closed intervals. Unless you have some reason to doubt it, you can assume the endpoints are included. We can break up the domain by considering the values of a function. The value of a function at any point is its y-coordinate at that point. For real valued functions, that value will be either positive negative, or zero. When the value is zero, the points are x-intercepts, and we call the x-values, which are part of the domain, roots. This function's roots are at negative 3, 1, 4, and 5. For continuous functions, the intervals between the roots, or between an outside root and an endpoint, have to remain either positive or negative. Together, the regions where the function is 0, positive, and negative 
make up the entire domain. We can also break up the domain by looking at a function's direction. As you follow this continuous function from left to right, you can see it decrease, then increase, then decrease before increasing again. At a general point x, y on the graph, if the function is increasing, a tangent line drawn on the graph will have a positive slope. If the function is decreasing, a tangent line will have a negative slope. At the turning point, the tangent line will have a slope of zero. Momentarily, the function will be neither increasing nor decreasing. It will instead be constant, if only for the briefest moment. These constant points, along with the endpoints of the continuous region, which can have any slope, are where we find local maxima and local minima. Maxima is the plural of maximum. Minima is the plural of minimum. A local maximum need not have the largest value on the graph, but it must have the largest value in its local neighborhood. That's why we call it a local maximum. Similarly, a local minimum must have the smallest value in its local neighborhood. When looking for local maxima and minima, remember, do not forget the endpoints. Now, forget the endpoints. The x values where a continuous function is constant, increasing, or decreasing, together make up the entire domain of the function. There are some simple rules for determining the symmetry of a function. We'll consider x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, and origin symmetry. First, the easy case. If it has x-axis symmetry, it's not a function, because a point with reflection across the x-axis would fail the vertical line test. Well, there's one exception, the y equals zero function, the x-axis itself. Other than that, x-axis symmetry means it's not a function. Functions with y-axis symmetry are called even functions. Here's an example. Notice the exponent on x is even. Functions with origin symmetry are called odd. Here's an example. Notice the exponent on x is odd. This exponent rule isn't enough to find every even or odd function, but it's where they get their names. Algebraically, we test for even and odd functions pretty much the same way, by plugging in negative x for x. If the result is the same function, the function is even. But if the result is the same function with its sign reversed, then the function is odd. If neither, well then, the function is neither. And now for some good words in closing. Remember that a relation is just a set of ordered pairs, and a graph is a set of ordered pairs plotted. A function must pass the vertical line test. It's plotted as the ordered pair x, f of x. It's never x-axis symmetric unless it is the x-axis. And even though it's really a set of ordered pairs, we identify it with its y value by thinking of y as f of x. Once again, thanks for watching.